Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. The primary role of my ham radio station is grid down comms. By grid down comms, I mean communications that are meant to augment traditional grid tied communications like mobile phones or landline telephones in the event of a disaster. Now it is possible to use my station to serve the community and it does that. However, it's more important that my station provides a bridge to my friends, family, my group members in the event of a grid down disaster. Now, along with my radio equipment and antennas, I utilize software tools such as JS8 Cole, such as VAR AC, MeshTastic, WinLink, along with SDR radios, allowing me to monitor traffic as well as communicate with others from DC to daylight. None of this would be possible if my station wasn't able to provide power during a grid down scenario. My station's power strategy is what we're talking about today. Stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. All right, guys, let's go. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcast emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. By now, it should be obvious to most radio operators that we can't achieve our off-grid communications goals without having off-grid power. It doesn't matter if we're talking about CB radio, GMRS radio, PMR radio, ham radio, mesh-tastic, or any other communications medium. Put simply, without a grid-down power strategy, our grid-down comms plan will fail. This point is much easier to understand when we're talking about portable radio communications or field radio. The topic is much more abstract when we're talking about fixed communications, for example, for a tactical operations center. Regardless of the type of station we're talking about, each and every one of them requires a source of power. Normally, that source of power is grid electricity or your mains power. However, when there's some problem with grid power, a blackout or some other type of grid down scenario, it may not be possible to get your energy from the electric grid. My station uses two different types of power for charging. I've got solar panels and I've got a wind turbine. I also have a hand crank generator to use during those long winter nights when solar power is impossible. But that's only a few weeks per year. Now, I had some comments on the last video and also on Instagram asking why I didn't use a 48 volt system. Well, I'll explain this system first and then go into why I didn't go with the 48 volts. Firstly, this system is set up on 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. There's four of them for a total of 5,120 watt hours. That's 400 amp hours. Each of these four batteries is set in parallel with the others so that we maintain the 12.8 volts or about 14.4 volts when the system is fully charged. This is perfect for our radio equipment and keeps our radios happy. There's no conversion necessary. There's no boost or buck necessary for under voltage or over voltage. It's absolutely perfect for radio communications. The interconnecting cables between each battery is a six gauge cable. There's battery four, three, two, and one. Battery one has the power lead that goes to all of our bus bars. Battery four, I've connected the negative power lead uh, that goes to the shunt and then to the negative bus bar. So there you can see the negative power lead, negative ground lead coming off of battery four. And here we have the positive power lead coming off of battery one. The ground lead from battery four is rooted behind the batteries and it goes to this shunt. That's the thorn wave shunt, Bluetooth shunt we've used on the previous 576 watt hour DIY lithium iron phosphate battery build. In fact, <laughs> that battery is still right here and it's still working extremely well. 
Anyway, from the shunt, we have uh, six gauge or six aug wire coming from the negative lead to the negative bus bar and from the power lead to the positive bus bar. Now I'm already outgrowing these small bus bars. I'm going to replace those when I have a minute to something bigger and more robust. But this is where we are at the moment. Each of the charge controller's battery outputs are connected to those bus bars. Many of you have left comments about it making this much more complicated than it needs to be. Each charge controller's battery output is connected to the positive and negative bus bars. The positive and negative bus bars are connected to the bank of batteries, plus and minus. Then, for each string of solar panels, we connect an individual string for every charge controller. At the moment, I've got 200 watts on each charge controller. So that means two times 100 watt panels. That's how my strings are set up. All right, guys, let's go through the radio equipment running in the off-grid ham shack. First and foremost, there's a JS8 call station that runs 24-7 uh, almost every day of the year. If it's down for some reason, it's because I lost an antenna or I'm doing some maintenance or changing things around here in the ham shack. The JS8 call station uses the ICOM IC705 and off-center fed dipole antenna. The 705 is also powered by power distribution coming off of the 5,120 watt hours, uh, powering up the off-grid ham shack. Now the JSA call station is running on a Dell laptop and there's a reason for that. It's, it's energy efficiency. And also the fact that it's powered by a USB-C power delivery port. Now the radio for the JS8 call station at the moment is an ICOM IC705. This is the apex radio for portable data communications. However, it's equally as comfortable in the ham shed. The Dell laptop uses USB-C power delivery. That's coming from one of these ports. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's got a normal USB output as well as a USB-C power delivery, 65 watts. And that's connected to the power distribution of the station. So all in all, the JS8 call station runs extremely well. It runs 24 seven and it only consumes about 600 milliamps of energy when the screen is off, when the laptop screen is off. So quite nice. Next up is my SDR station. My SDR station is running on a Lenovo Yoga C940. It's a 15 inch touchscreen laptop. And that's running HD SDR. It's also running the DX Patrol SDR for HF, VHF, and upper UHF. Now, one of the reasons for choosing this Lenovo Yoga C940 is the touch screen, but like the Dell laptop that I'm running JS8 call with, this also has a 20 volt plug, which can be powered directly from USB-C power delivery. And that plug is right up here in the outlet I showed you earlier. So there's no blo black box or converter box or anything like that. Now the C940 is not a, what I would call an energy efficient laptop. It's a powerhouse. And the reason it's a powerhouse is so that it can do the signal processing required for advanced HDR operation, sorry, SDR operations. 
the keyboard folds under so that it's basically just uh, the size of the display and HDSDR can be operated from the uh, touchscreen. It's pretty nice. The DX Patrol, maybe you can see it up there behind all the cables up on the wall. It takes its power directly from the laptop. Now in addition to the SDR station, I've also got a RMS packet Winlink gateway up and running at the off-grid Hamshack. This is using an Evolve laptop. It's a budget laptop that runs on 12 volts. That's running RMS packet and pretty soon it'll be running some HF RMS software as well. So the Winlink or RMS Packet Gateway is running Windows 10 and eventually it'll be running other software for HF Winlink as well. Now at the moment, the Winlink or RMS Gateway is using an ICOM IC705 uh, operating on 2 meters, 144.875 if you want to get your Winlink email locally. Now the reason for the Evolve laptop is, well, first and foremost, to see if it's robust enough to run Winlink. And secondly, because it runs off a standard 12 volts. Now this might seem kind of weird, but actually the Winlink gateway has its own power supply. So both the Evolve laptop and the ICOM IC705 are powered by the EcoFlow River 2 Max. Now the EcoFlow River 2 Max can take its power from 5.1 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate battery storage, or it can take its power or recharge itself through the tower solar panels. That's one string, and I can choose between them. Now the EcoFlow River 2 Max has two DC outputs on the front panel, two 12 volt DC, three amp outputs each. So one goes to the Evolve laptop, the second one goes to the ICOM IC705. The third DC output there is unused at the moment, but I can plug in a cigarette lighter or adapter if I want to power something else. The reason we have this supplemental power supply in the off-grid hamshack is during a grid-down disaster, the Winlink station is critical. It's critical to communication, so it needs to have its own power supply to ensure that whatever I'm doing with the hamshack, running lights or the diesel heater or operating my station, the Winlink uh, gateway on its own will remain up and running regardless of anything else that I'm doing in the Hamshack. Now another capability we have in the off-grid Hamshack is the ability to use and of course power our DMR and analog radios. Now there's a reason I chose these specific DMR and analog radios. They all have one common feature and that's that they have a USB-C charging port on the battery pack or on the radio itself. This allows me to use the USB-C ports that are integrated in the off-grid hamshack to charge up these radios directly. I don't need to use the charging ports or any, uh, you know, buck down any unique voltage for a specific charging port. Sometimes they're eight volts or uh, 7.2 volts or 8.4 volts or something like that. I just use the USB-C power delivery ports I have already integrated here in the Hamshack to keep those radios topped up or to top them up once they're depleted. Now, one of the other features I wanted to integrate into the off-grid Hamshack was an emergency off button. A button that will just shut off all of the power to the radios or let's say cut the power between the Ba the bank of batteries and the power distribution of course going to the radios that was incredibly important because i mean we're talking about potentially 400 amps from the battery bank 
And there needs to be a way to shut that down if uh, there's some sort of mishap. Now, in addition to the emergency off switch, I have also implemented ANL fusing throughout key points in the system, between the batteries, between the batteries and power distribution, between power distribution and the radios, and so on. With the potential of 400 amps coming from the battery bank, it was important to implement these safety measures to ensure any mishaps will be negated through fusing or with a manual off switch. All right, guys, let's try to finalize this video. A power strategy for your communications equipment is critical. It doesn't matter how many radios you have stored in a backpack or buried someplace in a stash. If you don't have a power strategy for your radio equipment, whether it's at your home station or for your field communications, if you don't have a good power strategy that integrates easily with your radio equipment, your communications plan will fail. Power is probably the number one failure point for most radio communications plans. Think about that. Keep that in mind when you're putting together your plan. Now, I didn't cover everything in this video. There's simply some things that I didn't want to show. But um, what I'd like to do now is ask all of you, if you have a very specific question or something I didn't cover and you want me to cover that in a part two of this uh, power strategy video, um, leave it in the comments. Yeah, leave it in the comments and let me know what you're thinking. Also, if you see something that... Uh, didn't look so kosher or uh, you need more information on or anything, ask me very specific questions and uh, I'll be able to uh, decipher those questions and answer them easily in a follow-up video. All right, guys, look, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. This was a long one, but I appreciate you watching. All right, thanks for watching. Ciao.